Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to manually create data in your app's database. Uh, this is useful when you want to go and prototype uh, something and you don't necessarily want to go and set up everything in your app to create new things um, or new users and so forth. You just want to go right into the database and create it and just see if your, your concept is working as you expect, your proof of concept and, and so forth. So let's just get right into it. And I'm going to show you um, how to do this with a, uh, a using a recipe, creating a recipe. So the first thing I want to do is come over here and I'm going to have ingredients, um, ingredient in my recipe, and it's going to have ingredient name, which will be of type text, and then I'm going to have recipe, and in recipe, I'm going to have recipe name, and text. And I'm also going to have ingredients, ingredients, and that is going to be of type ingredient. And it's going to be a list. I'm going to have multiple ingredients in my recipe. So this is going to be a list. So list of ingredients. And then for user, so my user is going to have a list of recipes, recipe. And it's going to be of type recipe here. And this is also going to be a list because my user is going to have multiple recipes. Yep, and I have this as a duplicate. I was doing a little work early in here, so let's see, where is recipe? Make sure there is a list of recipes. Actually, I'm gonna delete this and start over because I wanna make sure that bubble knows which recipe I am talking about. So yeah, the reason I, I just did that is because uh, earlier I was doing a little testing myself and I had recipe already in my database. So I wanna make sure that bubble knows that this recipe here, list of recipes is associated with this recipe here. Make sure that my database is all tied together appropriately. Okay, so now I've got my data types all set up for this. And now I'm gonna go over here to app data. Okay, so this shows me all the, the different actual data in my database. And I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna create some ingredients. So we're kind of starting from the bottom and working our way up. So we wanna create the ingredients first, then we can create the recipes, and then we can add those to users. Um, so if we started with users and try to create a recipe, the recipe doesn't exist in the database yet. So if I came over here and let's pick, uh, actually let's make a new user. So this user, and all you really need to do, I've got a lot of different fields in here for other um, demos. But the only thing I really need is an email in here. So cook at test.com. Okay. And then this should be cook here. The top one and yep cook it is okay now if I come in here and I type in recipe so I'm gonna do a pasta dish so if I type in pasta and do add it's gonna blank out because pasta doesn't exist in my database yet so I can't add it and this is why I need to again start from the, the bottom up and create the ingredients then the recipes and then I can add it to users so ingredients that's so we're gonna do pasta. We need pasta for our pasta dish. And let's do some uh, tomato. And we'll do some garlic as well. And uh, let's see, we'll sprinkle a little cheese on top of it as well like that. So that's one um, list of ingredients that we just added to the database here. And I'm going to also make another recipe for hamburgers. So I'm going to need some, oh, back up here, ground beef. And I'm going to need some uh, new entry, 
burger bun. Okay, so now I've got my ingredients, I can go create a recipe. So I want to do a new entry, recipe name, pasta, dinner. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to type in pasta in, up. Oh, it doesn't see it. Why is that? And the reason why it doesn't see it is because right now this is actually looking for, uh, let me just create pasta here for a second so I've got it in here. It is actually looking for a unique ID for pasta. Okay, so if I went over to my ingredients and I see pasta, it's actually looking for this here. But what I want to do is I'm going to come back over to data types and uh, where is recipe? Um, am I in the right place? I might not be in the right. Okay. Um, I click on burger bun. There we go. That's what I was looking for. So you see this little magnifying glass here? So I'm in ingredients and I am going to click on this and you get this pop up here. And you see how it has all these unique IDs for everything? So basically what I want to do is I want to go set it up. It's as unique ID now. For ingredients, I want to show the ingredient name. And for recipe, I want to show the recipe name, and I think that is good enough for right now. Okay, so now what I could do is come back over to recipe, and I'm going to click on this. Okay, now it says type ingredients ingredient. So now if I type in pasta, so bubble is now going to show me pasta, and I can add it just like that, and tomatoes. And then what I have, garlic, add that, and then I had cheese. Save it, just like that. So in my, pasta, in my pasta dinner, I have all of these ingredients. So again, what you want to do is you see the little icon here. Now if I go back in ingredients, if I change this back to unique ID, do the save, so you can see now in the pasta dinner, it's got all these. Now these were humans, this is kind of cryptic. Um, so I don't like that, and I'm going to come back over here and change it back. Ingredient 2, ingredient name, save, and pasta dinner. Now I, this makes sense to me. Okay. Now let's do the same. We got another one, so hamburger, hamburger, and what do we have? We have uh, beef. So you see I typed in beef, and it's got ground beef here. So Bubble knows enough that this is... You know, the, the, their search capability is pretty good, so I know that I can add ground beef in there. And I want a tomato, put a piece of tomato on top of this as well. And then burger bun. And there we go. So now I've got these two recipes uh, created. Now I can come over here. And for my user, uh, let's see, where are my recipe, 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 there we go. So I had pasta, I want to add that, and hamburger, hamburger, like that. So now I have these two, like that, and I'm going to save it. So now I should see, when I click on this, got those two, just like that. Now, in the design, just to show you how this works, I'm just going to say uh, name, and then current user, and where's first name, last name, first name. I think I need to go back in the database and actually update that because I don't think I have a first name for that user. Now what I want to do is add a repeating group. Okay, so just make that, I'll make it three. And then in here, it's actually going to be type user. Uh, oops, back up. I want to do a search. It's going to be user. And then email equals current users. Where is email? Email. This way, what I'm doing is I'm setting up the repeating group uh, to look for the current per, uh, user who's logged in, um, look for their stuff, their data associated with that user, I should say. And then in here, Uh, 
I'm going to do current sales user recipe recipe name like that. Make that a little bit bigger. Okay. And I think that should work. Let's go back to data. Now, the other thing we want to do is we want to do this run as. Okay, so click on run as and it's going to run as this user, but I did need to go and do a first name. So this is Chef. We'll just call him or her Chef. Okay, and run as. It's going to open up a new window here. And actually, so one of the things to note when you do this run as, uh, even though I am on this page here, when I do the run as, it's going to open up the, the index page. So what I want to just simply do is come back over here and hit preview. It's going to open up another window. So I actually have this main page, the index page, and now it's going to come over here. So now you can see it's got pasta and hamburger in the database. So that's it, uh, just a kind of quick and simple way of showing you how to um, manually go in and add data to your database. So then this way you don't have to go and set up a lot of um, other inputs and buttons and workflows. As you can see, there's, there's no workflows on this. Just manually went in and created it. So I hope you like this video. Um, if you do, please give me a thumbs up. I always appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, uh, certainly leave it uh, below. And I do create a fair number of videos here. So if you'd like to be notified of new videos, uh, please click the sub subscribe button and you will get notified of those. So thanks and uh, I'll see you in future videos.